I was in school for uh, my junior year is when Mr. Basie and the Count Basie Orchestra came to town and um, he was already riding on a motorized cart at that time and he couldn't go downstairs to where the dressing room was so he was kind of trapped, you know. And I was dating a guy whose band had the gig to open the show and they asked me if I wanted to sing a couple of tunes. Well, of course I said, yeah. So. I went backstage and I said, hi, Mr. Basie, my name is Carmen Bradford and uh, I'm opening the show for you tonight and I just wanted you to know that I, I just think you'd make millions of dollars if you'd hire me. <laughs> and he said, really, millions? And I said, absolutely. I said, there's nothing like having a young lady on your show. I said, I know you already have a male vocalist and his name uh, was Dennis Rowland. And uh, I said, but there's nothing like having a young lady on the show. I said, so will you listen to me when I go out and sing? He said, sure, honey, I'll listen. And he had this big juicy cigar with about this much left on it on the side of his mouth. And uh, he was so sweet. You could tell he was really, really patient with people that were 22 and <laughs> stupid, you know? So I went out and I did A Foggy Day and I sang uh, Lost in the Stars at Kurt Vile too. And I came off stage and I said, uh, so what did you think? He said, well, I think I'm gonna hire you. Mm -hmm. I said, really? <laughs> and he said, yeah. I said, well, when? <laughs> I said, cause I'm in school and I can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to go, I can, get on, I can go get my stuff now. <laughs> he said, no, he said, we will, uh, I'll be in contact with you. And I said, okay. So months and months went by actually nine months exactly and my roommates because I had moved out of the dorm by that time and my roommate said that old man is never calling you he ain't calling you you might as well go on and just finish school and I said no I'm getting out of here <laughs> so um, I was on my way to Santa Fe New Mexico to do my gig in this band that I was in this wonderful band called Minor Miracle and um, but the day before that, um, I had given myself a birthday party. And when I was blowing out my candles, I said, oh God, please let Count Basie call me tomorrow. And just kind of forgot about, you know, what, what I had said. And uh, so when I got in, I was getting ready to get in the car to go to Santa Fe, my roommate said, uh, Carmen, there's some old man on the phone. So I went back in the house because I just assumed it was my grandfather who was still living at the time. And, and I thought it might be important. So I went back in and I said, hello? And he said, uh, is this the little girl that wants to work with me? This is Count Basie. <laughs> I said, uh, is this Otis? Because <laughs> I have a, a cousin named Otis. I said, Otis, you know how long I've been waiting for Count Basie to call me. Don't play like that. I said, I'm on my way to do my gig in Santa Fe. I said, look, I gotta go, and I hung up the phone. <laughs> so I went back out to the car, and uh, my roommate said, it's that old man again on the phone! So I went back in the house, and I said, hello? And he said, I'm gonna call another little girl if you hang up the phone again. Now, this is Mr. Basie, don't you hang up this phone. <laughs> I said, I am so sorry. I thought you were my cousin, Otis. He said, this is not Otis. <laughs> now, do you wanna work with me or not? I said, absolutely. I said, thank you so much for calling. Now, when do I come? He said, well, not, not yet. I said, well, you know, I've been waiting, you know, about nine months now. It's been so long and everything. He said, okay, it won't be much longer. And I said, well, how much does it pay? And he said, uh, what do you care? I said, I really don't. My dad makes me say that. <laughs> he always makes me ask, you know, if I'm babysitting or something. And he's like, uh-huh. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? You know? So, because uh, I, I don't think he'd ever had anybody. You know, everybody was a full-grown woman. Sarah Vaughn, Ella Fitzgerald. Billie Holiday, wow, wow. And that really, all of that stuff never really um, hit me until much later. And I just broke out in a sweat when I thought about that. You know, Helen Humes and, you know, just uh, Frank Sinatra and Joe Williams and Tony Bennett and just the list goes on. Jimmy Rushing and that's like, 
And then there's that little girl from Altadena. There she is. You know, it was really, really something. So the day, um, the day after that, um, Wednesday, I got a call from Sonny Cohn, who was the road manager of the Basie Band at the time. And uh, he said, uh, well, this is Sonny Cohn, and I'm calling to tell you that uh, we booked your flight for Friday. I said, day after tomorrow? And he said, yes, honey, day after tomorrow. And uh, he said, so you bring all your big band arrangements? I said, I don't have any big band arrangements. Um, he's, I said, you know, I sing R&B. And he said, okay, well, bring all your little beaded gowns. And I said, well, I wear Levi's and cowboy boots on stage. He said, okay, well, just put your rope around your suitcase and meet us in uh, Boston. <laughs> Oh my God, so uh, I said, okay. And uh, so Friday came, and about 30 of my friends from school met me at the airport. And I got to the counter, the ticket counter, and there was no ticket. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's playing, somebody's playing a, just a cruel joke on me, you know? And so all my friends said, girl, we're going to the ATM, you're going to Boston. Now this is clearly a mistake and we're just gonna buy you a round trip ticket just in case. So they all went to the ATM and got their little money out and bought, isn't that sweet? And got me a ticket and I got there and I went to the hotel and uh, they had a reservation for me at the hotel so I knew it was real but the band hadn't checked in yet. And it's so amazing, you know, when, when you're young like that and you've seen aspects of, of stardom and you know, you go to the concert and you just assume that everybody's leaving in these incredibly large, long limousines and, you know, because you occasionally see them in those. So I was waiting, I was looking out the window, I had this huge room um, uh, at the Boston Park Plaza. That was the hotel, the fabulous old hotel. So I'm leaning out the window and I said, well, surely they're all going to be in separate limousines coming down the road. And I'm looking, you know. And this big, funky, stinking fumes puffing out bus. This old Greyhound came down the road, you know? And I thought, well, surely that's not it. And sure enough, that bus pulled right up to the hotel and, and the guys started getting off and then I saw Mr. Basie get off and I ran downstairs to the lobby and I said, hi, I'm here. And he said, yes, you are. He said, well, are you ready to go? And I said, yes. He said, well, we're gonna leave about 5.30 and we're gonna go and uh, work with uh, Tony Bennett. You know who that is? And I said, yes, of course. He said, well, we have a show with him tonight and uh, we're gonna do two nights with him at the Melody Tent. And then we're gonna go to New Jersey. And we're gonna go to Atlantic City and then we're gonna work with Ms. Vaughn. Now, are you familiar with Ms. Sarah Vaughn? I said, yes. And he said, well, listen, I just wanna tell you now, don't bother her now. She doesn't like little girls, so don't, just don't bother her. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, just do what I said. And I said, okay. So I got on the bus at 5.30 with the rest of the band. Basie and I were the last ones to get on the bus. And um, we stood at the front of the bus. And he said, quiet, everybody. He said, I want you to meet our new little girl. This is our little girl. And nobody. Don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. And did that. And nobody ever bothered me. And, and uh, they were uh, an interesting group of <laughs> some of the greatest musicians of all time, but extremely dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> and weren't um, just, you know, they were my grandfather's age and my great grandfather's age. And just had lots of. Um, ideas about uh, young women, older women, who was a great singer, um, who wasn't. Mascara, Carmen, you got too much of that stuff on your eyes. Too much of that blue stuff, oh yeah. Take some of that blue stuff off, that's too much of that. I don't like that. Just comments like that. Music comments, you know, where I'd be singing everywhere all through the arrangement, just hollering, you know. 
And Freddie Green, the guitarist with the band, would say, listen, this is not R&B. This is not an R&B show. This is not a Rita Franklin show. These arrangements, uh, when I finally did get, it took about three weeks for me to get my first arrangements written. And I just kind of sang everywhere. And he said, these arrangements are written for you because they have already listened to what you sound like. And so you sing where, where that space is in there. Everything is written right where the lyric is supposed to fall. And all those horn shouts that you hear, don't try to scream with them. You got your own place to holler right there. And we would go through the arrangement because I'd record the rehearsal. Go through with the rehearsal and he'd say, right there. And he'd be listening with me. Okay, right there. That's where you need to stretch that out. And, and uh, it was just uh, a real education, you know. But... Um, from the time I started, you know, at 22 years old, all of my arrangements have been written for me. Everything, by Frank Foster or Thad Jones or Eric Dixon or Chico O'Farrell and John Clayton. And uh, so it's really been quite a little life, kind of a roller coaster, you know, but uh, it just makes you hold on and wipe your hands off and hold on again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And keep riding. But uh, it's, it's been interesting. But anyway, that's how I got started with the Basie Band. Yeah. Yeah. Your face will flower through the darkness of the night Like the light of home before me Or an angel watching over me This will be my shining hour Till I'm with you again darkness of the night Like the light of home before me Or an angel Watching on me This will be my shining hour Till I'm with you again
Yes, sir.